It is our first family bike packing trip. We're in Sedona, Arizona, and we are going on a overnighter as a family. This is an experiment so far. Little Dusty's pretty excited. We're gonna do all we can to stay safe as a family and enjoy a night out in this beautiful landscape. This is also our first time taking the trailers overnight. This will be an experiment. Normally I've got all my bike packing gear on my bike, but with a baby and all the stuff that a baby requires, a trailer made a lot more sense. A little bit different riding with the trailer. The tail wags the dog a little bit, but uh, it carries the weight really well. I'm excited for this. Our first bike packing trip as a family. Hi, little one. <laughs> She's happy. It's weird, it takes a little extra energy to get accelerated, but once you get momentum, like the trailer pushes you. It's kind of weird. So part of this route is from Robber's Roost, which is on bikepacking.com. I went to ride with GPS, downloaded the coordinates, uploaded them to my Wahoo Element Bolt, and now I can make sure I'm always on the right track and I don't miss a turn. All right, this might be crazy. We're gonna take the Diamondback Gulch OHV trail. It's gonna be interesting with trailers. As with any bike packing trip, you just need to be prepared to hike a bike when it gets tough. Really interesting how the trailer affects your side to side balance. It tips the bike side to side and it pushes it a little bit every now and then. <laughs> Everything's got a delayed reaction. Whoa, that's really awkward. I don't feel that on the Cub X that my daughter's in. That one, I do feel the surging and the pushing in it, but it doesn't want to twist your bike. Because this is tied straight to the axle like that, when the trailer gets bounced or wants to tip, it tries to tip the bike too. Takes some getting used to, but I'm sure by the end of this trip, I'll be used to it. Is that fun? Woo, woo, woo. Hey, little Dusty, how you doing? Hi, are you having fun? You having so much fun? Oh, we need to tighten the back, that's what. <laughs> it is a lot slower moving with a kid in tow. She is hooting and hollering back there. She is having fun. She's making motorcycle noises. No! I want to try pulling that. All right, little Dusty, you ready? Here we go. That thing rides really nice behind this little bike. Whoa, that's a weird feeling. It wants to steer you. It kind of wants to serpentine back and forth, is he correct, back and forth. It's hard to just get it steady. Yeah, that will definitely take some getting used to. This one surges a lot more than my other trailer. Could be the weight. She's like a little sponge at this age. She's just soaking everything in. In a situation like this where something's new and she's just like soaking it all in, she just gets really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You're sure Aww. cute. I gotta say, I really like how this trailer has the entire front mesh panel. And I love that there's no zipper to get in and out. It's just these two little hooks. That is extremely well designed. It's cool, she's got a little roll bar in there if she ever did flip in a five-point harness. <laughs> it's 
something's a little loose when it unweights and there's play in it there. I don't know if it's the preload collar. No, it's something else. I'll have to play with that, but I'm getting a little noise. It's a trailer. Trailers are supposed to be noisy, right? Uh, had a little bit of a steering effect. I am really impressed with that Cub X. It's got some really cool features on it. I'm an eagle right now and it's fairly flat if we're honest. Surprise what uh, this little trailer will pull through without anything crazy going on. All right, many ATVs later where the coast is clear, this is gonna be the hardest climb yet to keep my momentum going gotta stay seated and i spun out i'm gonna push my trailer up and then come back and help tess hey. Hey. you trying to call to daddy let's go rescue the girls steep rocky climb here part of the experience oh yeah it's so loose. Got to keep that momentum going. You can't stop and then start again with these things. All right, I'm making it up this one. It's smooth enough in the steeps that I can keep my momentum. It's kind of annoying the pitch pushing my way. I should probably stand on the other side. That'd be smart. Yeah, we discovered it's better to walk on the drive side because the trailer goes right where Tess's legs are. There you go. That's better. Ooh, it's loose. And it's weird, you have to stay seated because in some ways your trailer kind of wants to pick the back wheel up. It's weird. Little Dusty's a trooper. I think she's ready for a less bumpy road. Yeah. That was smooth, huh? Yeah. Bummer, my K-Edge mount broke off from my bolt, so I'm gonna have to put this in my pocket. I find that when it's bumpy and a little bit steep, it's gonna be better for me to get off because, whoa, whoo, as you can see, the trailer pushes the bike and I can't slow down enough to go over these bumps slow for Dusty. This would be spicy on a bike with no trailer. Okay, I'm sliding. I can't do anything. You gotta hold it back. Okay. This is tricky even with two people. All right, let's give this 15 feet, see what happens. Fire wants to skid. And we're down. Whoo, that wants to push. All right, we're walking this. Interesting sensation. I have to weight the bars a ton because it just wants to push with all that weight rolling behind it. Whoo, that's. A scary feeling when your front brake locks up and just pushes and you don't have balance or braking. Part of bike packing is knowing when to push. Hike a bike's definitely a little bit trickier with the trailer. 
she's hollering to her, her daddy. Oh, man. The stroller handle should come in handy and pushing this rig up the hill. So the trailer has suspension and it works quite well. But if it starts getting bouncy, it wants to tip the bike side to side. It raises the center of gravity. We'll keep that momentum. You got it. Yeah. All right, let's take a little break. Oh, you are a good sport. Let's get that helmet off of you. Yeah. Did you get some rocks? Here, let me help you. Let's get the rocks out of your hand. There you go. Now you can eat the strawberry. They look like rocks. It's a little confusing. Well, we've been on the trail for three hours and we've only gone 7.7 .7 miles. This road was a little harder than I thought it'd be. Backcountry diaper change. Do you want some in your other hand too? Do you want a drink of water? Yeah, that looks nice ahead. Yeah, good sport. Well, little Dusty's had it and I don't blame her. That's no fun sitting in there. So I think we might make this camp for the night. Here we go. Come on out, my friend. Yeah. Whew, free at last. Sit on the rock for a second. Good little sport. Usually on our bikepacking trips, Steve and I can push through just about anything, but it's not really a mind over matter thing in this situation, which is, you know, it's good for us. It's gonna teach us to slow down a little bit. Huh, slow down and play in the dirt. You know, it's good. Like we're learning a ton by doing this. It's nice that we're close to home and it's nice that there are a lot of different roads out here. So we, we have the opportunity to kinda, um, kind of play it by ear. I'm super proud of her. It's easy for two adults to push through the pain, but it's not fair to ask a little one to do that. All right, we've gone 8.9 miles. We're gonna be on a forest road crossing it really soon. And tomorrow we're gonna catch that and just take the forest road back and cut our loop short so little Dusty can have an enjoyable time. like a clubhouse in here. Come here, my friend. You were such a good sport today. I forgot my beanie, so I'm gonna look like a dork all night. But man, is it beautiful out here. Little Dusty is having a blast, but she didn't get her wiggles out because she was sitting in the trailer the whole time, so we're Gonna take her on a little walk to get her wiggles out. She likes playing in the tent so much I couldn't get her to walk away from the tent at first. She ate a lot of dirt today. <laughs> Hopefully we're getting some of those wiggles out. Pretty cool that because we had the trailers we could haul a whole gallon of water up here. That's usually a big limiting factor in the desert. This is the coolest product. It's a Vargo titanium bot. It's a bottle and a pot in one. We love it. Good temp. Mm. Whoa. Mm. Mm. Well, we know what to get her for her next birthday. Her own little headlamp. You like that? You like being able to see where you're going? Yeah. Say dad. Good. Good morning. Hi. Hi. So fun camping as a family. Those beautiful clouds. She did pretty well. I'm really proud of her. 
She gets a little bit better at sleeping in the tent every time we do this. Hi, happy girl. She likes this camping thing. She was born into the right family. I believe if you start them young, kids love camping. It's inconvenient for mom and dad, big time. It's often inconvenient for the kid, but if they're used to it, most kids learn to love camping. We hope she loves camping her whole life. Ready to eat? Show me what you got. Fun. Yeah, put some more dirt in there. That ended up being a pretty good camp spot. It was pretty warm for us and we had the sun on us right away, which really helps things warm up in the morning too. We're just gonna start packing up camp and then we'll get on the road again. I think we took these trailers through way more than what they were designed for. But so far nothing's broken, no flats. And the suspension surprisingly works and does something and makes a difference. We're gonna modify our route and just take smooth fire roads all the way back and shorten our trip a little to keep it enjoyable for Dusty so that she doesn't come to dread going bike packing. Yeah, that's your chariot. Let's go. Now you're ready for the day. Here we go. It's cool, we learned a lot and now we kind of have a better idea of how to create a great trip for her. Oh, I forgot. I'm riding with the trailer and it surges a little bit. <laughs> the balance is so weird for the first two minutes with the trailer. Diamondback Gulch OHV Trail. We're on the dirt road now off the OHV Trail, which means a little bit smoother ride. So yesterday, the only time we broke a sweat was pushing our bikes up those hills. It's been pretty slow going because of the bumpiness of the route we chose. We can go a lot faster now on these graded roads. I think this is what the trailers were meant for, not what we did yesterday. But they survived. I was a little worried about pulling all the weight in the trailer, but aside from pushing up the hills yesterday, the exertion level has been, you know, fairly low. We're gonna get some nice views today as we head back towards Sedona. You really don't feel the weight of these trailers until you get to an uphill or downhill. That little Cub X carries weight so well though. It sits right over the axles and I mean whether there's 20 pounds in there or 40, it, it pretty much rides the same on the flats. It's pretty cool. It's nice. All the cars and side-by-sides are super careful and courteous they all slow way down and they pass us. Here come those beautiful red cliffs. Man, it's beautiful here. All right, we're gonna consult our map and find the shortest way home and give Little Dusty a break. How about a drink? Would you like a drink? She was ready for a break. Yeah. <laughs> That's a rock. I think we got about six, maybe seven miles to the car. All on smooth road again. If you feel like not enough people stare at you in life, try bike packing on a gravel road where lots of cars go by. You will get plenty of stares. But it's good. I like to think of us as ambassadors for the sport, showing people that are paying 200 bucks an hour to get toured around in Jeeps that, you know what? You don't need to pay a tour. You can just get out here and enjoy it yourself under your own power. And you can do it as a family. 
We've had a lot of great advice from a lot of friends who have kids and go camping with them and take them backpacking and hiking and jeeping and mountain biking. They all tell us, make it fun for the kids. It's an investment. You're not going to get the payback today. It's not going to be your favorite bikepacking trip today. But in three or four years, when they've done 20 of these and they're on a tag along bike, that's when it really starts becoming fun. And we're investing in her future and our future as a family. So it's still fun, but it's not the same type of fun as when you just go out with your buddies. You singing the mommy finger song? I gotta say, I do like this kickstand, how it will hold my bike up. All right, let's go while there's no traffic. So glad we got the model with suspension on that and the model with the plastic tub in the bottom. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but she's singing to me. Are you laughing? Is that funny? All right, we're here at Diamondback Gulch OHV Trail. That's the trail we took yesterday to start the bumpiness and the steep pushes. So, made a lollipop, and now we're retracing our steps back to the car. Now my exertion level gets up. It's those hills. Man, the thing I missed most compared to my last bikepacking trips are the plus tires, surprisingly. I don't think I'll ever bikepack without plus tires. I love them for this stuff. Way more traction. A little more confidence. Better in the sand. And Dusty absolutely loves camping. We're still working on finessing the riding experience with her. But it just reminds me, like, we need to get out and camp with her more. Whether it's bike packing or car camping. She loves it. Ah, oh, what a fun trip. Man, she's been a good sport. I can't believe it. Well, we've reached the end of our trip. It has been a fun learning experience, bikepacking as a family and with trailers. So to go bikepacking traditionally without a trailer, you need a really lightweight sleeping shelter, you need a lightweight sleeping pad, you need a lightweight sleeping bag, and you need all the bags to carry it on your bike. And that can run thousands of dollars if you go all out. What's cool about a trailer is you can have a $50 Walmart bag, an $80 Amazon tent, you can bring a full gallon of water and you can experiment with bike packing without having to dump a ton of money into it. Now, yes, the trailer's $450 and that's not cheap, but it can serve other purposes beyond bike packing. Like you can put your groceries in it. If you ride to the store, you can load stuff on top of these rails and this rear fender is the same height of it. So I could put like a, a forklift pallet on there and carry the whole thing on there. You could take it to trail work days and load all your tools in there. You could put a chainsaw on there. And because this is the single rear wheel, it can ride on single track, which is really cool. You could use it for your groceries if you don't drive your car to the store. It's got a lot of functionality beyond bike packing, where with the bags, I mean, you can still carry stuff, but they're really specialized for bike packing. This has been a super fun experiment. It's allowed us to bring little Dusty on her first bike packing trip, get her more exposed to the outdoors and learn ourselves more about trailer travel and more about camping with a kid. I'm really glad that we finally got out and took her bike packing. It's one of those things where it's easy to overthink it and then it just becomes something that never happens. I'm glad that we just finally said, let's just do this today. With every bike packing trip, there's 10 reasons not to go right before you leave, but you just gotta push through them and say, we're, 
we're dedicated we're gonna make this happen every time we go on a bike packing trip it's worth it and we're not gonna let the excuses keep us from going and i'm so glad we pushed through it was a great experience we learned a ton that we'll take to our future experiences and it's so cool seeing our daughter interact with nature and being together as a family this was a fun time thanks for watching there's a party in the mountains and you're invited